Welcome, everybody. It's Tackle Shop Confessions. I'm here in beautiful Ensenada with my lovely co-host, Paulina. Hello. And Hi. In Carson, California, at Island Fishing Tackle, we've got yeah. Sam De La Torre for a special edition of, uh, of course, Tackle Shop Confessions. Sam, how are you? Doing good. I'm doing good, man. All right, good. Um, we got a lot to talk about. I've been out fishing all day. Paulina has a list of questions for you that she wants to ask you because she says I'm useless when it comes to fishing information. I love her for that. So why don't we, um, I'll go to the questions in a moment. Paulina, why don't you ask Sam a question? What do you have on your mind? Sure. Hey, Sam. So I just started uh, fishing, uh, surf fishing. So I need to buy like a new rod and reel because the one that I'm using, it's not like very helpful for me this time. I don't know if it's because I'm a beginner. So I would like to know what would you recommend me to go surf fishing as a beginner? Um, well, we do have quite a few customers um, that go to Ensenada to go fish in the surf. And most of them are targeting uh, halibut and uh, uh, the, the the surf perch. And um, from what I hear these guys using quite a bit, it's heavier lures, you know. So they're using primarily lucky crabs, but some guys are using like uh, crocodiles and things like that too. So um, I, I would say something in the the nine to ten foot rated, maybe a, at least a, a six to twelve, if not even maybe an eight to seventeen, would be really good. Um, and I would recommend something that's in kind of a, a spinning uh, configuration uh, with maybe a three thousand to maybe a three thousand size spinning reel would be about right. Loaded up with twenty pound braid. Um, I know Daiwa makes quite a few reels. We actually we've been selling quite a few this last couple of weeks. We got in some new ones from them. For uh, they're a pretty good price. They're around eighty to one hundred and twenty dollars, uh, and they've been really good. You know the the legalis, the uh, regal, uh, real like in that in that class is pretty. Good. Okay. Kind of what I would start off with. Okay, good. Yeah, because I've been using uh, Chimano Sedona. I think it's huh? six six thousand. I think it is, and I mean I I find it very friendly, but I think I can start with something easier or. Or more practical. Yeah, I think I think the other thing with the three uh, with that three thousand size, because it's a little smaller uh, spool, is that um, the line's gonna come off the reel a lot easier. And so even on days that maybe there's a little bit of a onshore wind, you know, um, it, it, you'll be able to cast those lucky crabs quite a ways. Uh, and that that smaller reel is gonna cast better. Also, to the braid, I, I would say twenty pound braid, maybe thirty pound at the heaviest, but twenty pound would be ideal um to make those long casts out there yep sure thank you mm -hmm. and sam what what are you you're going to say something to make fun of me i can yeah, tell yes that he is useful and you're not <laughs> sam why don't you come down here to ensenada yeah i thank god you know normally i'm in a car center and you're picking on me thank god i got paulina sitting next to me to pick on me down here lights tonight <laughs> <laughs> i love it hey sam by the way it's such a beautiful town, Ensenada. You know, it's so lovely here. And we have the Malicón in front of Paulina and I watching families walk by, kids walk back from school. It's really nice to be down here. Yeah, kind of a paradise down there, I'm sure. You know, I mean, it's, you know, I've been there many times over the years. I haven't been down there lately, but uh, I've been down there, you know, through that, through that town many times and, you know, had a lot of great times down there. I haven't fished out of there, honestly. I have fished uh, a little further south, but uh, I know that, um, you know, fishing, you know, history there is a long way, you know. So, so those, uh, all those captains down there, they've been fishing for decades, most of them, you know, um, and grew up fishing. So I know that there's a lot of fishing history uh, for sure. Yes, and the young lady sitting next to me here is trying to start more fishing history by getting more women into the sport than ever before and she's got her mom and she's got her aunt and who else fishes with you? a friend that I'm kind of teaching her uh, but yeah I want to get more girls or women to start fishing because sometimes they like to but they are afraid or they don't know how to start so yeah right. I'm planning to help them and invite them because it's very good yeah it's kind of a vacation if you go to the rugs in an afternoon or something so yeah it's a good way to spend the weekend also and yeah you feel like you're out of your routine yeah, I mean, usually the biggest hurdle for anybody who hasn't never been fishing on a boat is making sure they don't get seasick. But, you know, if you go and pick the right day, uh, 
and not worry about that too much. You know, I mean, the good thing about now that is totally different fishing. Business. So if the person, you know, is maybe not ready to go off far, they can stick to the inshore. It's a fun day. You know, and you have, I mean, you have pretty good catches here in the rocks and in the right. seashore. Like, oh. um, I don't know, like calico bass, like sand bass, like flounder, and yeah, scoping. I mean, those are the ones that I have catch lately. So, yeah, I mean, you have fun and you have good fishes. Yeah, and, and stuff that's good to eat even. So, it's, it's kind of like all the way around is is uh, probably really, really good. I mean, probably a lot better shore based than have over here. We have some decent fishing, but I know down there it's just a lot better. Of getting people interested is having a high success rate. But and if any of this is BS about all these fish she's been catching, I will let you know tomorrow because we're fishing tomorrow for about eight hours. Yes. We're going to fish the surf Till tomorrow. The sun goes down. Yeah. So, and Paulina's picking the area that we're fishing. I had another area, Sam, that I wanted to fish, but I'll defer to Paulina. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's not, it's not easy. For Philip to go there, I mean, a lot of rocks, kind of a cliff, uh, mountain, and yeah. You're making fun of my old age again? No, about your knee, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe you got to be careful. You got to in the water. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Perfect. Hey, um, do you think she's a lucky girl, or do you feel sorry for her fishing with me in the surf for eight hours tomorrow? I don't know if it's going to make too much of a difference. I have a feeling that you're going to start off red hot and puffing out your chest like you're going to do all this stuff and halfway into it you're, you're going to peter out so oh no 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 i set the bar really low yeah that's my game my game is paulina you're going to kill me oh i don't have a chance and then if i do halfway decent i feel like it's a win so that's that, <laughs> that's my thing anyway, and sam there's a guy down here named foca that's uh -huh. his nickname sea lion i think you've heard the story right yeah. i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. great guy and he's going to come with us tomorrow also oh. And, of course, we've got our personal assistant who's over here in the corner sneezing right now. Uh, Mackie's coming with us. So it's going to be oh, fantastic. Wow. There, too. That's awesome. Yeah, all the team. Also, my mom and my aunt. Yeah. Wow. They're coming? Yeah. They're, oh, that's they're really. Whole, the whole Juanita's fishing team. Are, are we doing, like, a barbecue or anything? Oh, maybe if you catch something. <laughs> so for carne asada. I don't care about some surfers. Yeah, you better. Hey, you, want to read it? you want me to read a couple questions? Yeah, let's get on it. All right, I'll read a couple questions, and then we can move on from there. Daniel Lightfoot, Michael Limon wanted to come to your shop tonight, Sam, but he's got a Little League baseball game that got in the way. He's trying to listen in right now. Scott Buchert says, Sam and Paulina are the best. They run it all. Notice he left me out of that? <laughs> he's angry with me today. I can tell you why later, maybe. Sam De La Torre says, this is Sam De La Torre, Phil will screw this up. Somehow, hey, it's your cue. Senor Felipe, your coffee is ready. Oh, gracias. <laughs> Muchas gracias. I'm like a ray here, you know? Um, let's see, where am I here? Uh, oh, Sam says I'm going to screw this remote hookup up here. It's working fine, right? Oh, let's see. <laughs> and Steve Neese comes in and says, leave it to Phil to get the remote side up and running. I love Steve. <laughs> Sam, I, you're making fun of me all the time. Uh, Scott Buchert says, you are right, Sam. He is messing it up right now. Scott's really got his sights on me, man. He's the guy that sends my wife's uh, notes all the time. Yeah. You. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Robert Slager says, hello. IJ says, maybe the yellowtail bite is too good to leave an afternoon bite. Uh, we saw a lot of yellows today, Sam. Uh, there were some guys um, fishing over with Victor at Blackman Sword Fishing. You remember the name of those guys? Oh, they're like all iron or all jigs. I mean, they may have a only. iron only, something like that. A YouTube channel. Oh, jigs channel. only, yeah. Jigs, jigs only. only or something like that. I, yeah. I think it was, but they, they're really cool guys. We ro They rolled up on us. Nacho came over to say hi. I fished with him before, and it's really cool guys. And I even, before they came over, I go, man, those guys up there chucking iron in the bow, they know what they're doing. They had the 10-foot rods, and they were just firing away. So we saw a lot of yellows. The one thing, Sam, I'll tease, and uh, Paulina didn't hear this, but we went in on the beach to save our butts. And in 40 to 50 feet of water, I mean, the guy drops a hookup, or uh, what do you call those things? Yeah, a hookup bait. And he winds in this nice sand bass, 
Mm. And following up were like eight or ten other sand bass, just wow. like kind of like the old days. Yeah, yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're in a sand bass bite, and they're biting really, really well. A long mixed up with shallow water rockfish, not that big, but 40, 50 feet of water. And we finished our day off on It's for Real Sport Fishing with Louis Prieto with a great, great, great afternoon. So we've got more fish here to cook up. And Paulina's cooking up a, an absolute feast for us, aren't you? Yes, we're having a fish party because we are eating a lot of seafood, to be honest. We are preparing some smoked fish, uh, sashimi. Mm, what else? Oh, it's Mexico. How do you call it? Um, agua chile. Yeah, we're making but, agua chile. Which is raw shrimp is with shrimp, lime yeah, it, right? Raw shrimp with uh, lemon, uh, red onion, mm, Serrano, chili, yeah. So yeah, we're having a good dinner this night. All right, Steve is back and now taking the puñal and putting it right in my espalda, putting the knife in my back. He says he messed up the fish catches by going out there and looking for them. Now this, everything's working fine. Or I don't know what he's talking about. James Blanchard. I'm hoping the bluefin tuna come back on trip independence. So the independence has been running more and more trips. Are you getting nervous about? The blue fin tuna, what do you think? A little bit, because, I mean, that's the purpose of the tournament. That's why it's called Baja Bluefin Tournament. But and that's May 10th, 11th, 12th, right? 9th, 10th, 11th. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the the price is for the bluefin tuna, but if we don't have, maybe another species can come into a game. Well, like yellowtail? Like or... yellowtail or big fishes. What about you, Sam? Are you pushing the panic button yet? Are you worried about this? I don't know about pushing the panic button, but definitely concerned. You know, yeah, it feels like it's a different kind of year. I mean, it doesn't mean it's going to be, you know, totally dead. I feel for those guys down there that, that have a tournament that's, you know, constricted to that time. Sometimes, you know, weather or things like that can, can uh, mess things up. But uh, these fish kind of pulling a no show here is definitely going to make it a little more difficult, you know, especially with the amount of. Uh, interest that there was in that tournament i think that, that the tournament did so well you know the people that, that have been promoting it has done so well to really do a good job promoting it i know that i've had quite a few customers come through here that are going to be fishing in that tournament and so, so they're really excited about going down there but they also are aware that this tuna just hasn't been around but like you're saying i mean that stuff you know is notorious not following any rules you know that stuff in the be here full speed and then gone. So they vice versa. It can be on gone and all of So hopefully that stuff will show up and I have the ability to but it's only be a for you know trying to catch up it's just like booking a trip, you know guys always ask you, you know, well when's it time to book a trip and it's like what they're almost asking you when is it going to be a guaranteed cat and fishing? That's just not possible. But that's the question they want to ask you. I'm pretty sure Paulina gets that all the time. Is we'll call and say, "Well, when, when can I get a tail?" Well, this, this is a good time. This is a good time, but it's not guaranteed. You know, never. You know, in fishing, is a guarantee that part of it. But I, I understand it's probably uh, probably something to be concerned with for sure. All right, tons of people watching now. Hit that like button, everybody. Paulina here at Botes Juanitos in beautiful Ensenada, along with me and Sam De La Torre up in Carson, California, in the good old USA. International show tonight, and we are so happy we're able to bring it to you with the seagulls chiming in in the background. Yeah, huh? They're laughing about the <laughs> You know, maybe Scott is mad at me because in the middle of the Independence trip, I faked a phone call to Paulina. She doesn't know this. And I go, oh, yeah? And I said, Paulina's on the rocks next to Botes Juanito, Scott, and she's catching blue pantena. I'm <laughs> trying to get the GPS for Brian and permission so we can go in with the independent. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. And I go, I'm telling you the truth. I went into a whole hour thing with him. So maybe that's why he's so mad at me. All right, here's uh, here we go. Um, Scott Bukert is back again. He's done fishing. I already talked to him. He's at the restaurant with Paulina. Were we at a restaurant tonight? Yes. What? You're going to get... We weren't at any rest. what no, restaurant. No, no, no. We're here. This is my restaurant. Yeah, Scott. <laughs> Boy, Scott's on a roll tonight. He is cooking the rockfish. Yes. Oh, he does know that. Okay, very good. Patrick says, 
Is there a shortage of UC blanks right now looking for a nine foot Wahoo and eight foot Mega? Sam, that sounds like a question for you. Yeah, uh, you know, I'd have to go look. I, I might have one of those uh, in stock. Um, I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't know if there's a shortage. You know, if you want, uh, give me a call tomorrow and uh, I can look to see if we have one. And then if we don't have one, I can uh, call down there and see what they have in stock. I, I think we might have a... <laughs> can you hear that? Yeah. That guy's calling me out. He's calling me out over there. <laughs> but, uh, Patrick, yeah, give me a call tomorrow, and uh, we'll see what we can do. I, I think that, uh, you know, shouldn't be any problem uh, getting those. All right, fantastic. Emilio Escobar says, hey, what's up, guys? 540 Slinger. That is our friend Jeff Yeoman. Jeff, thank you for your service. Good evening, Phil, Sam, and Paul and Lena. Any luck with the yellows today, Phil? Jeff, I was a black cloud again. I shut the yellow bite off in <laughs> Ensenada once again. Yesterday, those fish bit. We saw them today, but man, they would pop up for a mere 10 seconds, 30 seconds. You'd run on them, Jeff, and they'd sink out, and then they'd pop up somewhere else, and then they'd just completely disappear, and that's when we went. We we covered a lot of water today. I mean, we covered all of Todos Santos, circumnavigated it a few times, went up further north of there, went further south of there, did Punta Banda. We cover it out in front of Hotel Corral. We are all over the place, as well as the guys from Black Fan and Mara's and everybody else we saw out there. So no yellows today, I'm sorry to say. Jason Waller is galley cook. Like, yo, no, you're not a galley cook, but he's on the Amigo. And he says, hi, guys. Pablo Ilago sends his very best. Steve Duncan, I was fishing today. Hello, everyone. Steve, thanks for being here. I kind of just covered that. So it's good to see you. Graham Sulik Fishing Rod. Building and repairs says, hey, Phil and Sam, I'm going to throw you in, Paulina. He left you out and probably didn't know you were here. I uh, hope you guys are having a good time. We are, Graham. David Alcantar, howdy, gang. Sam, the other day, Captain Roy Rose, I wonder where he mentioned this. Oh, I don't know if it was on my thing or not. Mentioned someone used a Salus PL-68 to catch a big yellow fantuna. With some assist hooks, will that work? Well, at night for local blue pantera. That was a Freeman Adventures exclusive report, by the way, Sam. Go ahead. It was. It was. It Why was is that it. funny? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, a, a, a mini bluefin have been caught on that PL sixty eight. Um, you can put on some assist hooks. I don't think you have to. Um, typically, those PL sixty eights get them rigged the right way. They're going to come with a, a larger tuna hook on them already. So I don't think you really need to do any kind of uh, extra hooks, but. It won't hurt it either, but uh, but I know personally uh, 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 caught a couple uh, uh, bluefin on that PL sixty eight and and uh, I know one year or maybe right around the time that those uh, flat fall jigs were kind of hard to get that PL sixty eight the guys who had that stuff long guys were doing really good on them on the bluefin so for sure they'll work. Paulina, do you think that when you're fishing for bluefin tuna at night and you're dropping a jig down deep, what's your opinion about the color? glow in the dark, or do you think you just got to get something in front of them that are going to bite it? What, what do you think? Is it color important? Yeah, for me, color is important because I know that they like neon colors and fluorescents because uh, deeper they see that. I mean, fishes uh, clearly see the, the fluorescent colors and those things. So, yeah, I'm in for bright colors. All right. And you're wearing black tonight. That makes no sense at all. Because I don't want to be caught. Uh -oh. oh, very smart. Yeah, that was a good answer. I have to admit. All right. Uh, Red Pill says, Evening, gentlemen. Sam Wood, Cal Star Seeker, or UC Rod. Would you recommend for fishing halibut and maybe the occasional yellowtail or white sea bass? Sam De La Torre. Yeah, probably like a uh, 278H would be good. Um, and they have that in both the uh, all glass and then, um, also in that BTG or the GG series. Um, also, in the Cal Star, uh, maybe. A uh, 800L, 800ML, something like that. If you're looking in the UC, I probably would look at that GP80 Mega or a uh, maybe like a, 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 a US80 uh, Mega as well, or even a, maybe a, uh, a Phantom. They have that 85 Phantom would be a nice one too. Um, and the Seeker, maybe something like their uh, TAC 80 would be a good one, um, or TAC 90. All right, very good. Cool granddaddy, sweet forever. Paulina, Sam, thanks for pointing out Phil's shortcomings. 
Oh, my God. Wait a minute. And then he makes up for it. Love the show. You know that, Bill. Thank you, brother. I thought I was getting a, This guy always sticks up for me. You two are, you know, this is no fun being between you two. I told Paulina if she needs to go over and cook the food or anything, go ahead, because I'm getting picked on too much here. Emilio Escobar. Hey, Bill, what do you think about the, oh, my God. The I'm going to, Sam, what do you think about the RM9 UV, <laughs> the Mag Bay lure for speed trolling? Did you get the pictures right? Oh, yeah. Emilio sent me those. In fact, Paulina's mother was showing me photos of that lure the other day and yeah. asking me all about it. The Mag Bay, it's the new hot lure. Do you have those? Did she uh, realize that you have no idea what you're looking at? Yeah. <laughs> no, I've got everybody down here fooled. So yeah, no. you know, we always notice that. That's why I'm asking you the questions about yeah. surfacing because Billy, I mean, you I'm, know him. I'm going to clean her clock tomorrow. Well, I, yeah, now, now the, the contest is on. <laughs> yeah, she's showing me the photos right now, if you don't believe me. I bet if you hold that up there. There you are, see? Oh, oh what do they look like? Let me see again. Uh, wait, let me. Lord, like a, uh, maybe like a. Uh... Oh, you don't even know what they are. What are you no, talking about? Like uh, like a Halco, it looks like a Halco Max or a Halco Max 190 or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they look cool. I'm pretty sure that they would work. Yeah, actually, they are UV. I mean, I haven't used them, cause, uh, but I saw like they are uh, UV lures that they they look amazing. I mean, underwater. Yes, they absolutely do. All right, Scott Buchard is back again. Scott's all over this tonight. I hope he sent some money down here. <laughs> You better give a super chat, Scott, or you're going to get screwed on your birthday. I'll tell you that right now. Diego Nuno is a great captain. Do you agree, uh, Sam? He is a exceptional. He is. I fished yeah. with him down here in Ensenada, and he is. He's not only an exceptional captain, he's a great person. He, yeah, he is. He, he gaffed my big tuna. He's a good dude. All right. Here's one for you, Paul, uh, Paulina. Steve Duncan says, old farts rule. I think that's you, right? Or is that me? That's Come back on. to me again. Yeah. Steve, I, I love you. <laughs> Steve's number one. All right, Robert Graber says, good evening, Phil, Paulina, and Sam and the Freedman Adventurers family looking at Phil mastering that remote technology and split screen. <laughs> Wahoo. Man, I pulled it off. I'm so great. Yeah. Look at this. He's getting my younger bikes. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Watch this. Are you, are you watching? I'm going to do something really. It's like a special effects. Watch this. In one second. You'll only see Paulina in the screen. Okay. And then I'm back. And now we're together. What do you think? Magic. The magic of technology. <laughs> Told you we're going to love this. Thank you, Robert. I appreciate it. Sam De La Torre says, you guys going to fish artificials or bait? So, Sam, I brought down ghost shrimp. And I brought down some, uh, what else did we bring? Ghost shrimp. I forget what else. But. What are you going to fish? Artificials or bait? Yeah, artificials. I'm thinking about plastics and spoons and some jigs. Yeah, small jigs, like 40 grams, 30 grams, maybe. There you go. Yeah, artificial fish usually count four to one for bait, so. Uh, wait a minute. That oh, I fish artificial, too. I'll there you go. I fish artificial-wise, too. That's good. This is on. I mean, you know, if, if, if you want to catch, you know, I mean, they catch them on bait. You know, I know you're a beginner, Phil, and you haven't. You want to make sure you catch something, so you want to on your hook. So. Hey, Sam, what what is this? You know, why, as long as we're pushing this to where Paulina and I are going to end a friendship over this tomorrow, okay. right? What is the prize going to be? Do you have a prize like a a hat from Island Fishing Tackle, or what could it be, or a burrito, or maybe a a chicken wing dinner next door? Yeah, a troll car hat, maybe. I don't know. I see a nice troll car hat. <laughs> uh, coffee. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> she was lending her hair to me the other night, so yes. I can lend my hat to her. All right. Um, <laughs> let's keep going here. And, uh, hey, yeah, David Alcantar isn't even in Ensenada, and he knows who the guys were. They were The guys that were on that other skip are strictly iron, strictly iron guys. Nice. So, yeah, they obviously, and they were super nice. They rolled up on us and we're very, very kind. Uh, Steve Duncan, are you going to be live tomorrow, Phil? Are we? You want to do another live show tomorrow? If you want to, but I mean, while we are fishing? I don't know, man. Yeah. Well, yeah. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we could. Yeah, Steve, uh, we're going to be live tomorrow. Thank you yes. for uh, 
saying. Uh, Mackie says no, but it's, yeah. um, the the hookup. I don't know how that's going to work in terms of Wi-Fi on a beach, or we're obviously not going to have it. So I don't know how to work. But maybe you can give me a hot spot. You know, to do that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe we can do that. We'll try. Yeah. We'll definitely try. That'll be a lot of fun. Um, all right, David Leanos is driving home listening to us on the freeway, and he says, great show. He can't talk, but he just wanted to say hello, so good stuff. Uh, Pokey Dad Fishes, Buenos Dias, Phil, Sam, and Paulina. I have a GRP of 30 new fishermen Group. and women Group. that I would that I work with that are interested in going on a boat. Recommend in OC or Long Beach for a group that size for June or July. Sam, do you want to recommend a boat? So, uh, you know, I probably would start off, you know, you call all the landings. That's a pretty big group. Um, it really depends also going to be on how long you want to go. So maybe overnight or all day or half day type of thing, you know. Um, I probably would start off by maybe looking at, like, the uh, El, um, uh, Monte Carlo. Uh, I'm not sure how many will go on the Omega. I don't think 30. Yeah, they can. But uh, that Monte Carlo would be good, Native Sun. You know, if you want to go overnight, obviously the Freedom. They get down into uh, Long Beach. You're looking at the, uh, uh, of course, El Dorado and the Victory. And there, you know, you got a couple other boats. But um, the bigger, the bigger, you know, thing to kind of look at is going to be how long do you want to go. That may determine what kind of boat you want to go on. So that probably be something you want to you want to uh, figure out. First. But you can start off by calling each of those landings. Typically, someone at those landings going to have someone in the office that can kind of direct you uh, to make sure that they have that kind of boat size available for, for what you want to do. And since they're new, I would kind of suggest they stick to a half, maybe three-quarter day, but right? It just depends on what kind of experience they want. You know, maybe they want to go see Catalina. Yeah. Maybe part of the day they want to go, like, you know, take a like that. So it just, yeah, it depends. <laughs> but you're right. A half a day typically is about all you want to do for a, for a new group. All right, very good. Um, let me get back to where I'm sorry I screwed up here. The guys from Duran's Fishing Products posted Fishing with Mara's most likely the jig slingers you met up with. No, these guys, Jeff, uh, were over on uh, my friend Victor over from Blackfin and Fishing with Nacho. So it sounds like those, all kinds of celebrities down here today. <laughs> oh, yeah, except me. No one even consider everybody's picking on me chris navarro hello everyone sam i'm going on a day and a half trip on the ocean side 95 this weekend out of san diego do i have a better chance of catching an <laughs> albacore or a bluefin tuna and of course you know what i say a bluefin for sure but maybe, blue, <laughs> maybe Man, blue i don't know i don't know actually yeah yeah there's still probably a better chance of catching the bluefin not much not much better but hey you never know man that stuff can just pop up at any time so Chris, I, I think you got to go down there with some, with some, uh, just a good attitude, and and if you bring a couple beers, I think you'll have some time to do that. Bring your chair to hang out a little, maybe. I know the Oceanside 95 doesn't have too much deck space for that, but uh, you know, just go down there with the idea you're going to hang out and have a good time. All right, good stuff. I'll remind you all also, and Sam, I know you'll be tuning in when Tackle Shop Confessions ends. We start another show. Where we're gonna check out all the great food that Pauline is making for this fiesta tonight. Yes. I'm excited about that. I hope you're hungry because the menu is very big. I'm starving. You know, on the way back from our fishing trip, I stopped and I got a big bottle of Pepto Bismo. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because I remember the last time you cooked, and uh, so yeah. I'm all prepared for this. I can't wait. Yeah, you're not eating this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, Isaac says, great, good evening, and he says, great mix-up with everybody. He's loving the show so far. And Steve Duncan says, Paulina, I love your aviation classes. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, Cue Ball says, Phil and Sam, Frankie Sanchez. Hi there, guys. I hope all is well. What tackle recommendations would you recommend for a half-day boat? Also, when rinsing your rod and reel, does regular water work? Thank you, Sam. Or Paulina, or whoever wants to answer that. Sam is the master. Yes, Sam. <laughs> so on this your half day boat right now, and it, it really starting to uh, just pretty much target uh, your rockfish. So um, still, you know, uh, it, 
as this as the 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 season rolls on, you might get into some some bass and some But for right now, you're probably looking at maybe uh, um, six to fifteen ounce sinkers. Uh, hook sizes are going to be from like two to two o. I throw in a couple of uh, maybe hookup bait, plastics, and you know if they end up fishing some of the kelp lines for some uh, for some bass. Um, as far as your uh, your uh, your fence is concerned, yeah, regular water out of your garden hose is, is fine um, for for rinsing it down. One thing you want to remember is rinse it, towel, wipe it down, make sure you get off the scales uh, off off your rod, and even just make sure you get all the the, uh, the salt off of it. But what I, what I like to do sometimes is I'll even uh, get some simple green and spray it on the towel, wipe it down, and rinse it. And you don't have to take a whole lot of time with it, but with that water uh, just coming right out of your garden, it's going to be. All right, good stuff. Kim Herbert. Sam, you know Kim. He flew all the way in from Missouri to go on a five-day trip with yours truly. And he also went by at a prior time to visit Sam. And then he came over to the 22nd Street Landing where I have my studio. And uh, Kim is a lovely guy. And so is his daughter, Lindsay. Uh, it's really good to have you here with us tonight, Kim. He said, Lindsay and I made it home after the five-day trip. Looking forward to returning to California in June. And Sam, you know very well that Lindsay caught the very first halibut of her life. It was a giant fish on the Independence. She won a rod that you donated. And now you're going to wrap it up for her, and she's going to pick it up in June. Yeah, yeah. She called the other day, so uh, we, need to, we need to hook up again. I think there's some uh, examples, of, just some ideas about uh, about wrapping it up. But, yeah, we're going to get that done when she comes in there. Hey, um, what what have you caught in the surf so far? Now, you've been saying, I thought you only caught a calico bass, but you've caught, yeah, I mean, like, some halibut and some other stuff? Now, only scoping, uh, calico bass. And mackerel, <laughs> and yeah, I think only those. Do we want to introduce Foka right now or not? Do we want to have him pop his? Oh no, he ran away. No, no. All right, well, we'll we'll get to him. He's tired. Yes, I can say that. JC, what would be a good rig for baitcaster fathom? Do I really have to read all these numbers? FTH four hundred LPHS for yellowtail. I didn't mean to sound that way, JC. By the way, I loved. So those, they gotta shorten those things, man. This is ridiculous. Well, if you if you knew anything about fish tackle, you wouldn't have to read all that. <laughs> <laughs> we should just make time any, any anytime there's any anything other than letters in the question, you just shouldn't read them. That's, that's right there. <laughs> so that's the fathom, the fathom low profile. That's what the LP is for, and the HS is for high speed. So he has a 400 size bait caster. I think he may be asking uh, what rod he. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, anything in that eight foot, 15 to 40, 20 to 50 pound uh, would be great for that. And if you get something that has a grip on it, that matches up well with that reel. A lot of different ones out there. You know, uh, Shimano makes some good ones, Dabo makes some good ones. Uh, we just got some in from Akuma. There's ones that I really like, the PCH. Okay. But there's quite a few different ones. 50, 40, 20 to 50 is going to be your, your life. Perfect. All right, very good. Scott Buecher says he's going to Monarch Bay to catch the Blue Fin Dinner. Where the hell is Monarch Bay? Uh, I think he means Monterey Bay, I'm pretty sure. The whale, watch boats. <laughs> the whale watch boats have there been seen some Blue Fin Dinner. Yeah, so. They're getting yeah. I'm gonna tee off on Scott here pretty soon. I'm leaving you. You're going? Yeah. All right. She's got to. She's got to run off and cook. If yeah. you get a question, I'll call you over. Yeah, How's sure. that sound? I have to plan a party in five minutes. How's that sound, Sam? You're, <laughs> you're stuck with me for the rest of the night. Oh, the party's over. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Paulina. Yeah. Hey, say good night to everybody. Bye, Sam. Thank oh, you. You're Bye. gonna be back on uh, yeah. another show. See you in a while. <laughs> Bye. All right, the lovely Paulina. Hey. We just got 20 bucks sent to us from Isaac. Isaac, we deeply appreciate that. And now, Sam, it's back to you and I, man. What can I tell you? I don't know what you can tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I like this, man. You thought I couldn't pull this off, and it seems like this is actually working here tonight. All right. Let's see. Uh, uh, Bluefin tuna, uh, this is Emilio Escobar. Bluefin tuna are highly visual predators, and they are known to be attracted to certain wavelengths of light including ultraviolet. So he is firmly backing up 
the lovely Paulina. Sounds good. That's it. Uh, you could, you know, throw, you know. Yes, Paulina's right. She's super smart, or whatever you want to say. All right, uh, Scott Buchard's still going to Monarch Bay. Frankie Sanchez says, "What pound leader would you recommend for fifty pound braid, Sam?" So you can use anything from you know fifteen to forty pound. I'd show you uh, with that. So uh, anything from fifty would be. All right, sounds good. Um, Steve says, uh, Phil, hopefully the next time you do the split screen, it gets stuck in the spot with you off the screen. <laughs> I could maybe, maybe I can get somebody to just put Paulina's photo up there for the rest of the night while, while we finish this up. Thanks, Steve. Um, yes, when you're fishing sweet, says Steve Duncan. That's Absolutely. Uh 540 Slinger. Yes, the Strictly Iron guys were on Blackfin. Thank you very much. Yep. Um, AKA, th this is Isaac asking how you guys are doing the wings tonight. Hey, Isaac, we have got Paulina just ran off and her mom and her aunt and everybody here on the Malecon with a beautiful sunset and a gorgeous, huge Mexican flag in Plaza Bandera. Um, they're cooking up an absolute feast. It just smells so good here right now. So, um, of course... I wouldn't rush Sam off too quickly here tonight, but the minute I see we're down to our last question, I'm out of here so I can go eat some of this great food. But thank you so much for checking it. Thank you so much for sending $20 our way. I really, really appreciate that. Um, Anthony, Paulina's off uh, doing something right now, but I'll come back to your question when I see her, when she walks out here. Uh, let's see, bait situation. Oh, I can, I can kind of answer that. Paulina, what is the bait situation in Ensenada? Is it something that is provided through a bait mart service or something you guys have to do every day? So they've had all kinds of trouble down here for the past several years on having a bait receiver. Last year, they had no live bait receiver. This year, there's rumblings about that it's going to happen. And just about off the record, every guy you talk to who's in sport fishing down here, they, they just they see the sardine guys going out making sardine to feed the tuna in the tuna pens and they feel like it's having an adverse effect on sport fishing here and also they can't get any live bait so that's the situation here it's it really bugs these guys a lot sam hmm. yeah that's a tough one you know i mean from what i hear you know it, it takes an immense, immense amount of bait to keep those to, to grow those tuna so and i'm pretty sure you know those guys they, you know, they see it right in front of them every single day so yeah that's JC says, thanks for having a wonderful show. Let me see if I can get this right one time. Uh -huh. Nautical tendency, tendencies. Tendency. Nautical tendencies. I think I got it right. Buena, Sam, for Cedros. What are the setups that you're bringing to Cedros? Yeah, I'm still kind of, you know, uh, mulling that over. You know, I, I'm really tempted to go down there with, with just fun stuff. You know, I mean, Jake stuff. Uh, Low pitch stuff, spinny rods, you know, I mean, uh, it, it, it's so hard. You know, you can only take so much, but at the same time, such an opportunity down there to, to catch them, however you can catch them. So I think that uh, I'm going to probably take my rod back to just then this one and then one. Uh, Two slow pitch rods and one heavier jigging rod. That's what I'm thinking right now. All right, sounds good. Doug Rubin from San Diego, California on El Sueño says, hello. Um, also, uh, Isaac says, Sam, with the jigging setup, can I fish rockfish if the bluefin disappear? Yeah, for sure. You know, and, you know, uh, technically a lot of stuff... It, it, I, that, you know, especially that slow pitch stuff. So the one that Isaac bought was kind of more of a tuna, uh, rod and reel. And so, uh, you start getting into that deeper part of the where, where water opens up, you to fish 100, 700 feet of water. You're going to be good with that. Um, 4,000 size uh, ocean. 
you might consider one of those the next down put it up with some lighter weight braid use also for rockfish as well but also you know they fight that we got that rod and reel for you uh you're watching maybe the um but uh it's just here here to fight but in the in the, later in the even if after the season you might consider using that for a rock all right very good thank you sam isaac says sam can you give us a sneak peek into the video you did yesterday you did a video you were telling me you were doing some videos uh tell us a little bit more about that and where people may be able to find those who did it with you and fill us in on the details yeah it was with the with the you know great youtuber <laughs> They actually came over with a uh, light, you know, separate. It's pretty cool. They felt like you were part of a movie studio or something like that. But, so that's kind of like uh, the, the style of content they're putting out, highly edited. And, and we go through a lot of back and forth and a lot of, you know, uh, to make that a good. Obviously, from what experience I have. Good stuff, Sam. And I am not, for some reason, I think it's a problem here with our Wi-Fi because I don't see anybody complaining. So some of the stuff I'm not hearing, but I watch to see when your lips quit moving. So if I don't respond to a jab you made at me or something, that's why I did hear that this guy showed up with lights and all kinds of sophisticated stuff, kind of like when I show up, right, with my iPhone. And I, I mean, put it on I put it on a tripod and I say, uh, here we go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he he uh he definitely was pretty cool, you know. I mean, yeah, it, I mean it was almost like it was the show me and you, except for that it was uh much better. Uh he was a, had a lot of planning. Uh you know, he had actually people helping him out that Well did, Lena, come in here and help me. You know, and but other than that, other than that, I mean it was I was I called him Phil a bunch of times, you know. Was, <laughs> <laughs> You're killing me. Now, for some reason, God let me hear every word of that. So I got all of that. I got all of that. All right, let's see. Uh, Richie Rich, Phil, have some fish tacos for me. Richie Rich, I will do that. But without the tortillas, Emilio Escobar, there's a lot of bait in the bay. There is a lot, man. We saw birds picking everywhere. And he said four sabikis working at the same time do the work. Yeah, he's right. There are some times, however, when that is not the case. But Emilio's right right now. At present, there's a lot of bait around, ton of bait here. Therese Cesar says, all you guys are invited to Puff Daddy Pajami Jam. Are you going? Uh, I'm going to skip that myself. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jason Allen says, good evening, Phil and Sam. It sounds like Sam is breaking up really bad, having a hard time understanding what he's saying. Oh, it's not just me down here. Yeah. It's you. At that moment, there seemed like there was a lot of uh, background noise, something going on. So, I don't know. All right. Well, hey, that's our last question. Is this my opportunity to go run and have some good Taco. Mexican food with Paulina and her mom and aunt and everybody? Yeah, Matthew. you know what? It's, 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 food's going to get cold. <laughs> Sam, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, same here. Hopefully, you guys get them tomorrow. When are you coming back? Uh, I'll be back probably late tomorrow night or early Thursday. I'm going to be at the Fibbers Christian Club right. on Thursday night doing a seminar. And then uh, Mackie and I are doing some stuff on Friday. Also, we're going to be filming some other stuff. So uh, we'll be back next week, either Monday or Tuesday, whatever works out best for you for uh, an in-person um, Tackle Shop Confessions. I've already told Mackie to go out and buy a flashlight. So you know, <laughs> at least he can stand there with a flashlight and we can look more professional. Yeah, on, was, the, on the next show. I should have took pictures of it. It was pretty cool. All right, Sam. Hey, good to see you, my friend. Yeah, man. Safe travels to you. Thank you so much. Great being with you and having Paulina on with us. And we hope to see you really, really soon. 
I'll see you when I get back, Sam. See you later. Take Bye. care. Bye-bye.